using one plan for total agile portfolio management with Azure DevOps. My name is Doug Wellsby, and I'm the channel manager here at Wickersoft. I'm also joined by Jose Levy, our director for Agile PPM and Azure Services, and Matt Willey, a product manager here at Wickersoft. During today's webinar, attendees will be on mute and the line will not be open for questions. However, feel free to use the GoToWebinar chat feature to submit questions. I'll address these questions during the webinar and will respond via email if we do not get to your specific question during the broadcast. If for some reason you get distracted or pulled away from the webinar, no need to worry, as I'll be emailing a link to the presentation once it has been posted to our YouTube channel. I'll now turn the presentation over to Jose, who will be Thanks everyone for joining. Today we're going to talk about uh, one plan for total agile portfolio, uh, enterprise agile in, in other terms, or scaled agile uh, frameworks. Uh, when you include DevOps and Agile, then you can achieve actual continuous uh, integration and deployment. And then finally, we can do this because we have a cloud platform to deliver services on. And uh, in, in probably all of your organizations, you're going through um, a transformation initiative to see how you can leverage the cloud more to accelerate your delivery of capabilities to your organization. And um, th there's no um, better way to get into some market trends. So I wanted to highlight these just to um, show how we're reaching an inflection point in terms of Agile. 88% uh, of corporates are using Agile hybrid approaches as part of their project delivery. And now 55% of total projects are Agile and Agile. So we're at a point now where more than half of our projects are actually being uh, delivered uh, in Agile mode. And as far back as 2017, actually, uh, the Project Management Institute of all, uh, of all organizations issued an Agile practice guide in which they actually recognized that um, scaling Agile is now a, a priority and that um, we have actually different ways of, of reaching uh, scale Agile uh, approaches and we're going to talk about that a little bit because really from a from a corporate standpoint we, our job is really to no matter what tool no matter what approach we have to provide leadership with um, the ability to to see where where we are in the delivery of our capabilities uh, within the organization so now I wanted to uh, put this here just as a this is actually borrowed from Donovan Brown in his DevOps presentation at Ignite. But the point he was trying to make is what we're all striving for is obviously the picture on the right. Uh, back uh, when uh, Formula One uh, or races, you know, car races were starting, you had four people working on a car. It took 67 seconds. It's actually a very sad video if you actually see it because uh, on the left-hand side, there's a man actually banging on uh, the the, um, the screws of the tire in order to change it. Uh, the driver is waiting. There's gasoline being poured on the car right behind the driver, and it takes a full 67 seconds. In fact, that particular video they didn't, couldn't even change, you know, more than one tire. So it's uh, actually very sad. When you get to the right, we have to actually, you know, a Formula One race where you have an entire team of people working together and making it happen. And uh, the average pit stop time actually for Formula One is 1.13 seconds. So just think about that concept in terms of uh, every single individual knowing what they have to do uh, and trying to get the, you know fuel and uh, four tires change in that amount of time. It's just absolutely amazing. There's a lot of technology involved, obviously, but a lot of teamwork involved more than anything else. Um, so uh, something to take a uh, takeaway in terms of how we're trying to drive our organizations. So, uh, Few more stats just to set the stage. Um, our the, the 2019 Scrum Master Trends from Scrum.org came out, and no surprise, you know, a lot of the anecdotes that have been in the market were revealed in the survey. Uh, so the first one is, you know, where I, I is an organization using a scaling framework, and what I mean by scaling means that they're trying to get three or more teams, uh, the work of three or more teams in an agile method. 
uh, rolled up uh, into program or to portfolio. And here we have 51% um, uh, organizations are using a scaling framework, 49% uh, are not. Uh, so, you know, kind of tells us where, where we're at in terms of uh, enterprise agile. Uh, more surprising is, you know, are we using single or multiple scaling uh, frameworks, which I, I think, you know, in itself can be a, a challenge. Uh, the majority organization, 71% are using a single scaling framework, 29% are using multiple scaling frameworks. And I think that, that would be a, an incredible challenge because you're talking about, um, you know, figuring out how to map to a, uh, um, a portfolio, a rolled up portfolio with multiple scaling frameworks that might actually have different taxonomies uh, involved. It can be done, but um, you know it's more of a challenge. And then lastly, uh, you know what's the prevalence, uh, the uh, the preferences for enterprise agile frameworks and uh, safe uh, is uh, the predominant one, but it's closely followed by uh, less and Nexus, and there's uh, also others. So. Those are the uh, the primary ones um, uh, that are that are used. So we can, I think the takeaway here is that scaling is a priority. Scaling uh, doesn't come in one flavor, and um, you know if you're not currently doing it, uh, you have to consider uh, bringing this into your uh, organization. So in terms of the uh, uh, enterprise agile BPM frameworks, I just brought you know screenshots from all of them just you see that they're they are uh, different styles different philosophies at the end of the day what we're trying to do um, is is really reaching an objective of integrating multiple teams team increments to meet goals so at the end of the day we, we do have um, you know they all have some commonality in terms of the the bottom frameworks you know of using um, um, agile uh, principles in their own particular interpretation, but when um, uh, when we get multiple teams working together, you know, three to eight, or even larger sets of teams, that's what these uh, enterprise agile frameworks are supposed to address. Uh, and you know, the, the more popular one is uh, Safe uh, because they've extended it to actually program and portfolio, and there's even a, a you know a large systems uh, level that uh, can be incorporated. Uh, and what they're trying to do again is provide um, SLPs with uh, the roll up of all the work from all these different teams. So we have multiple work streams completed in an aggregate format. And then what we're supposed to provide our um, leadership teams is, you know, that portfolio of uh, plan and completed projects. And it doesn't have to be prior. You can be calling it product solutions. I don't want to cut up on a t taxonomy internally within an organization. So let's go ahead and get a poll going to see if uh, folks are actually fake. So here we go. We have uh, what enterprise agile framework are you currently using? And we'll leave it open for. 30 seconds, see if uh, everybody's awake. And, you know, this is a big assumption. Basically, um, assumes that you actually are using Agile, uh, um, Enterprise Agile, which, you know, you might not be uh, yet in, the, in, in this mode. And that's perfectly fine. It looks like we got uh, everyone answering. Thank you very much. So uh, within this audience, uh, we see that SAFE is uh, well represented, but you know there are other um, uh, different uh, frameworks that are being used, which is you know perfectly, perfectly fine. Uh, you know as long as you're actually considering the roll up of uh, agile teamwork, that's really what's important because that's what uh, your leadership teams are going to be looking for. Let's continue with our presentation. And so I, I, I make the case for um, Enterprise Agile because at, at the end of the day, our you know, value delivery system for uh, an organization continues to be 
the same. We have strategies. So what are the financial and operational targets that have been defined by our leadership teams? You know, from there, we're going to cascade into a series of portfolio management initiatives of projects, whatever you want to call it, projects, investments. But, you know, there are sets um, of um, large work components that have to be uh, delivered, and they usually have um, investment dollars assigned to them. And uh, we have to choose between them because there's multiple options and there are not infinite resources and infinite dollars. Um, there's an execution layer. That's really where um, most uh, of us participate, you know, in Agile or Waterfall, and I'll talk about that in a second. And then finally, we have to actually uh, measure and that we achieve the intended value. Did the, did the outcome result in value for the organization? And usually, in very brute terms, or root terms, it, we're talking about profit equals revenue minus cost. So did we increase revenue or did, or did we decrease cost? And was there value uh, coming out of, of that? And all of us that participate in uh, the delivery side, you know, we're, it doesn't really matter whether we're talking agile, waterfall, hybrid. Here the, we're addressing enterprise agile PPM concepts but it could very well be that your organization is still, um, you know, within uh, using water, waterfall. In fact, uh, as we noted, 45% of projects are still doing waterfall. Not in all cases will we use agile. Uh, that's also, um, you know, a, uh, a fallacy to think that, you know, we can ex execute everything within the organization as an agile, uh, as an agile project. If we're talking product, we're definitely, uh, going to select Agile. If it's not product, which there are, then, you know, we're, there's going to be other uh, methodologies, but we're still going to have to roll it up into one portfolio for our organ for our leadership teams. And then another point just on this one is if you currently sit within a PMO or a strategic realization office or a project management office at an enterprise level or a business group, group level or a digital transformation office, this is your domain. You have to be actually uh, addressing, you know, the portfolio management capabilities and not just tracking work. Uh, the execution side, uh, which again, there's multiple ways of tracking um, through agile tools uh, or project management tools. Um, that's actually the easier part because what you have to do is figure out how all of this is going to come together, and you're going to be able to tell tell your leadership team how we are realizing benefits. So. Uh, please, you know, keep that in mind and take into account the recommendations here for doing enterprise um, agile PPM. Okay, another poll. Let's get uh, our second poll. What is the state of your organization's agile transformation? So here, uh, you know, it, it it could be from just uh, Scrum Agile in uh, teams uh, to doing Agile PPM. So it's fairly broad in terms of what we consider an Agile transformation. It's, uh, you know, really going beyond just doing waterfall and doing something else that's not waterfall and, and um, you know, Agile in its different flavors, different modes. So go ahead and wait a couple more minutes. Response is moving around. Just a few more seconds, and here we go. Okay, so results are, you know, fairly consistent. If you went to the um, scrum.org uh, survey, uh, uh, there were there were a few organizations that were um, waterfall and hadn't started yet. Uh, the majority of uh, the organizations were early and growing. And um, uh, just like on our results, there are some uh, stalled initiatives and some mature initiatives. Uh, I think believe mature, mature in the market is around nine percent, so you know we're pretty close. So you know we're we're tracking uh, this, this audience is tracking uh, pretty closely to the the rest of the market. And um, you know it, again, the if you think that you know Agile Manifesto, you know when it came out and um, the growth of uh, the different variations 
of uh, agile uh, work approaches and enterprise uh, agile uh, scale agile approaches you know we we're still in the early stages at an enterprise level so we'll continue and we, we talked about this last in that session, but I want to reiterate it. You know, the, the criteria that we consider for putting together our solution for Agile is, first of all, you need to integrate the existing team solutions. So, you know, there might, there, in, in most cases, there are multiple uh, solutions uh, implemented within an organization uh, that you have to take into account. You know, different flavors, different preferences. Um, even within, um, you know, using the same tools, there might be different instances uh, and that have been, uh, you know, implemented differently, again, based on those different styles of Agile. Um, there's also, uh, you know, single teams and road mapping solutions. So the way that the team actually produces that product roadmap is really important, uh, or multiple teams, if you're talking about multiple teams rolling up to a product. Uh, we want to provide SLP with that portfolio-wide planning and tracking. So uh, I really emphasize, you know, the top down, beating the bottom up. So the bottom up uh, project teams uh, actually, you know, being in the same uh, views as what uh, leadership is using to plan program uh, or uh, to plan product at a, at a broader organizational level. And then whatever uh, agile framework you use, you want to make sure that you have the ability to map to its taxonomy and to its uh, process. So, um, you know, in, in our case, uh, we tend to lean more towards uh, SAFE, but, um, you know, Nexus and, and LESS are also important and we can accommodate those uh, those methodologies. So if, if you look at our one plan uh, solution, these are kind of the guiding principles that we're gonna try to follow. So having said that, you know, our uh, one plan uh, for total agile PPM that uh, my colleague uh, Matt Willie is going to show is going to you know focus on how we can integrate portfolio management, financial management, resource management, and some of the other capabilities that we've you've been used to uh, you know while doing waterfall into uh, you know the roll up of our Scrum uh, base uh, project and product information. So it's really about you know. Providing that, providing that portfolio uh, planning capability to leadership and uh, from all of the work that uh, product teams are actually uh, delivering. So quick schematic um, of the one, uh, enterprise agile one plan, and I think this this um, is slightly different from what. Uh, we presented previously the last week's webinar was uh, strictly uh, on DevOps and in this case we were focusing more on the solution where DevOps um, was the you know the primary interface and one plan was actually integrated within it in this case one plan is actually the primary solution and where we provide the you know portfolio planning cost resources and reporting to enable that uh, lead portfolio management and then underneath, uh, we can connect basically any tool that, that's available. In fact, just for uh, for for making the point on integrating, you know, the other other half of work, uh, Project Online can actually be integrated into this data set also. So you would have, uh, you know, all, whatever Agile team solution uh, is within your organization, and at the same time, you know, bring any other waterfall projects that. Um, are actually uh, also being used. So this is what we're going to talk about in a second. Um, last poll before I turn it over. Just so that um, we all get an idea of what uh, solutions you're currently using. What Agile tools are you currently using? And again, the, it could be one, it could be many. So please select all that apply. Oh, 
couple more seconds, and then you'll get uh, everyone to respond. And you know, the the proliferation of agile has uh, grown significantly. Uh, there's you know a lot of uh, both groupware, freeware, enterprise solutions available. Obviously, the the lar the predominant one we'll show in a second. Uh, but for this audience, anyway. You know, I was expecting Jira to lead, uh, but you know, in this audience, uh, Azure DevOps has a good participation. But again, we we um, this one was you know select all that apply, which means that if you're trying to do enterprise agile, you would have to actually integrate all of these different solutions. So um, with that. Uh, having been been established, I'll turn it over to my colleague Matthew Willie, who's going to run us through one plan for total agile portfolio. Management. Here of our agile portfolio management system, you'll see there's some quick links around was all I was pointing out, as well as uh, if you wanted and you were using Yammer organizational wide or within specific groups, you can tie in things like Yammer posts, calendars of events, etc. Here on the home page. Um, from there, we'll jump in and we'll go through the basic process. You know, uh, we'll, we'll start all the way at the beginning with a new idea. We want to do something new, whether that's a new product, service, whatever it might be, um, or an improvement to existing ones. Um, and we'll go all the way through the process to closing it out um, and, you know, looking at analysis of what's going on through reports and so on and so forth. So up front here, if I wanted to submit a new idea, we can open this up to a certain set of users or open to the wider public if we choose to do so to allow people to submit ideas um, on you know, new programs and or epics, whatever it might be um, that people want to suggest you know, happen. And so what I'm looking at right now is a list of some different ideas in different states. Some of them are in the new state, they were just submitted. Others are in review, others are approved, um, and then you know, to be worked on. Um, and if I go into a particular one here, like support customers using mobile, for example, um, you know, when you fill out that new idea form, we can capture some specific information from people. What this does is instead of people sending you emails or you know, telling you things in the hallway or tracking Excel spreadsheets other places, we can keep one place where all these ideas come into. We capture a specific set of information, you know, the information that you want, and this is all configurable, so we can set this up to capture the information you want. This is just a starting place, a template to start from. And we can even start to do some, or, or whatever it might be, right? depending on the level there um, that this is at. Uh, from there, um, we want to relate these to strategic themes as well as our programs and epics should all relate back to strategic themes as a business. And so early on up front, you have to define you know, from the top down what your strategic themes are. A very famous one, for example, for Microsoft is cloud and mobile first. That's a strategic theme that was put forth uh, by the CEO to say, you know, this is something we need to do. Well, now how do we break that down into programs and epics and so on and so forth um, and funnel in the right ideas to help support that? And so if I was to go into one of these strategic themes here, like that particular one, you'll see uh, related to that strategic theme um, are all of the different programs that might be related to it that are going on, as well as any ideas. Um, so that we can see, okay, here are the things that we're doing to go and try to achieve this particular strategic theme at this very high level, right? From there, let's jump down into the program level and see some of those programs and how we can start to go do some program level planning. Um, you know, we have multiple different programs here. You can see as those become active and we're actively working on them, we can see status of those, are they at risk, you know, so on and so forth. We can see some lean metrics over here to the right, like release predictability, number of defects across this program, uh, issues, risks, um, as well as some financial information. So, uh, for example, in SAFE, they recommend using lean budgets um, and different methodologies, you know, recommend different things. But at the end of the day, the business, no matter what, still requires us to track a budget as well as generally actual costs around these things um, so that we can get them approved. And so if I drill into one of these programs, I'll go into my Fabricam program here as an example. Um, you'll see there's uh, a good amount of information we can track around a program. And again, this is configurable, so we can add fields for things that you want to track that aren't here out of the box, as well as remove things that don't make sense for what you're doing. Uh, but, you know, basic details, health, uh, dates, if we have them, unless this is just kind of an ongoing thing, costs, you know, so on and so forth here. 
Um, but to the right, if I click on the one plan tab, this is where I can really start to do some more you know, detailed planning. Uh, still at a very high level top down, but I want to better understand, for example, before I go and approve this program, the cost that it's going to take to do that. There are multiple different types of costs. There's going to be labor costs as well as there'll be you know, materials and contracts and software and whatever else you might need to do. Up front, you may start at a very high level. Maybe we just put together a budget by year. I do have options in here to budget by quarter or by month if you're looking for more detail. But it can be as simple as coming in and building out this, which all rolls up and goes, okay, for this Fabricam program, I think it's gonna take about $2.2 million. Um, once I get all of the information together that I need, I can then submit that for approval here through a workflow that will route to the proper people and go through your proper approval stages. That is configurable as well. No code necessary, just configuration of settings and such. So that then, um, you know, we can get that high level program through an initial approval once you have all the information there, so to say. Later on, as you start to actually execute on that particular program, you can track things like high-level risks on the program, issues, any change requests for you know, new things that you want to do that weren't initially, say, budgeted for, um, and even track high-level program status reports to show how this program's doing over time um, and be able to report that back to higher-level management. Um, also, if you're using an Agile tool like um, Jose mentioned earlier, you may be using a variety of Agile tools. Here in my demo site, I have it connected to both Azure DevOps and JIRA. So some programs in Epix might utilize Azure DevOps for the execution. Those teams that are working on them might utilize that, whereas others could actually be using JIRA and it still all rolls up together into one place. Um, so for example, if I was to click on open this one up in Azure DevOps, which is where this particular one is managed, um, then you'll see it takes me into that Fabricam team project here in VSTS Azure DevOps. Um, and you can see then the different epics below it that are eventually going to get built out you know, into more detailed backlogs of features and user stories and so on and so forth later on. Um, same would go if I was to open this in JIRA, if this particular one was open in JIRA, it would link me to that JIRA project with all of its different ethics and user stories and so on and so forth into it. And we'll see a little bit more about that as we get down to more of the execution level in a little bit. So from there, you'll notice this program also gets broken down into many different epics, um, same ones that we just saw over there in VSTS, but we can add an extra level of detail and an extra level of planning around this. So what I'm gonna do now is drop down to the epic level. We're kind of working our way down the hierarchy, starting from the top, you know, strategic themes. The next we did programs, now we're into epics below those, breaking it down into a little more detail. And at the epic level, um, which is sometimes thought of as kind of the project level, if you want to call it that, that's where we might go and do some more detailed planning before we move forward with any particular epic. And so, uh, for example, I'm going to go into my support customers using mobile epic here. <clears throat> and at this level, um, another thing that I might want to start doing is resource planning, right? We haven't really done much with resources yet. At the program level, we did some costs. Um, you may do high level resource plans there, but more likely it's more at this level. And so if I go into my one plan tab here at the Epic level, you can see I can build out my high level resource plan. I don't yet need to know exactly who's going to be working on this. I may just need to know something you know, high level, like we're gonna need you know, one team or two scrum teams or how many different teams for what period of time so we can get a better idea of the amount of resources that this particular epic is going to consume to try to get it done you know, within the time period that we're trying to get it done in. Um, so you can build out these very high level resource plans. Before you go and pick a particular team, um, I can look into all of my teams if I wanted and or just you know, certain ones that I'm trying to target for this and see what they're already you know, set to be working on within a period of time so that we don't try to make them work on multiple things at once. Depending on the methodology that you're utilizing and how you know, pure you are in Agile, you may you know, follow the rules, so to say, and have only one team working on one thing at a time. And you know, the real world and in many organizations, that's not always possible and not and you know you can't follow that. So this can help you to see where there are some conflicts and maybe we need to you know do some things to bring other teams online and such. And we'll show more from a resource management perspective across everything how we can make those types of adjustments um, you know, here in a second. Um, from there, once you've built your high-level resource plan, um, you're going to want to translate this into a budget, you know, the more of the financial side of things. Notice at this level, I'm, you know, budgeting by quarter. I could also budget by month or fiscal period. You know, there are multiple options in here of what level of detail you want to budget at. 
but I can just simply hit the import button here and that imports my resource plan and gives me my labor costs based off of blended rates. So I don't have to manually go and try to calculate what those labor costs are gonna be. It takes care of that piece for me, rolls that up to give me my total labor. From there, this is very much like an online Excel spreadsheet, so I can key in any of the other costs necessary, which all rolls up and gives me my total budget for this epic of about $278,000. Um, and you know, early on, we did some program level budgeting. What we now need to make sure is as we you know, build out plans for each of these individual epics, that those epics do not exceed the program level budget. And there's multiple ways to look at that and reports and so on, views and so on and so forth. Um, but you know, the goal is there is to do some program management high level at the top, you know, get a budget together. And then now we're gonna go build this into a little bit more detail at the epic level and then compare them, make sure we don't exceed what we have. Um, also, at the EPIC level, we can track things like risks, issues, changes, status reports like I showed up at the program level earlier. Um, but also, at this level, we can connect into our Agile tools. So again, I'll hit open in Azure DevOps here. Instead of it taking me to the kind of parent program as a whole, it links me right into that EPIC over here in Azure DevOps, support customers using mobile. And I can see any of the specific information related to that particular EPIC there. As well as, as you build this EPIC out, you know, you build features and user stories and such uh, below that, we can roll the relevant information back over here into one plan so that if I'm working over here in the portfolio management tool every day, I can get a status of what's going on and see those different user stories, features and such here over in one plan from a status perspective and a timing perspective, as well as this is going to feed back into resource management views and reports. Um, and as well as you can also start to track time if your organization requires you to track timesheets on this. I'll show that a little bit later of how you can then track time on these different, say, user stories, features, epics, et cetera. Um, so from there, you know, we've now kind of broken it down. We put in our strategies, um, we built out our programs, our epics, and what if I wanted to look across all this as more of a portfolio manager, department manager, maybe a steering committee? I want to look across all these things, do a prioritization exercise, and start to really build out my roadmap. Well, there's a capability in here to allow me to do that as well. And so what we're looking at now is a list of all of these different activities, you know, epics and such, and we can filter this down to look at it just at the program level if we want it or just at the epic level. And we can see some key information around them, like swag, basically high level, how big do you think this is going to be? Um, and or if I pull this over to the right here, we can also start to see things like WSJF and, and any other metrics that we might want to put into here. If you wanted to pull in more traditional financial metrics like IRRs, NPVs, and those types of things, you absolutely could as well. Um, and so uh, just to do a basic prioritization here, I can simply drag and drop these items to place them kind of in the priority order that I want. Based off of that, if I pull up the, the right pane over here, you'll see this is a high level roadmap timeframe. I can actually then drag and drop and move things around based off of priority so that I don't exceed any of my constraints. Well, what constraints might I have? Well, there's two kinds. One is first financial. And so if I come here, I'm gonna show my pivot chart. And what this is showing me below um, you know, is my, my dollars and I can compare my budgets against my targets and such and be able to see where I'm going over under, make sure I'm not exceeding any of my targets more on the financial side. Um, but I could also look at this more from a resource perspective and make sure that, you know, if we're doing these things when we're planning to do them, you know, building out this roadmap based off priority that we're not going to create any resourcing issues here um, for any of my different teams and or individual resources, depending on what level, you know, you're managing down to. So this guy here can kind of help you to do more of a portfolio analysis prioritization type of exercise to build out that roadmap and figure out exactly when and where we're going to do things, how we're going to staff them uh, and make sure that we're, you know, still staying within our defined budgets as well. Um, from there, as you start to execute on this, uh, resource managers can come in and have a more resource you know, perspective of things, specifically just focusing in on the resource side. So you know, we're kicking off these new epics and we're starting to work on them and we need to staff people here and there and maybe you know, certain you know, people are asking for the same team to work on their epic at the same time and that creates problems. How do we go and resolve these? We can come into views like this as a resource manager and see where those issues are. So I can see here, for example, if I expand team five, 
being asked to work on two different things at the same time. Um, so that's going to create a problem. Well, how can I solve that problem? I can simply come here, and one way I could do it is just drag and drop this out. If we're willing to move this guy out, you know, um, then I can drag and drop that over to the side, and that's going to relieve some of that over allocation there for team five if I had dragged it further, you know, so on and so forth. So we can really start to get a bigger picture of, you know, who's working on what, where our problems are, and then make some adjustments to this accordingly um, to, to avoid issues before we even start the work, right? Generally, this is done before those epics even get kicked off. We're trying to lay out a sequential order here, build out that roadmap. Later on, we may need to make some adjustments because things overrun longer than what they said, or they made more than what they said, or whatever it might be, and we can always come back to this and adjust it at any point as well. <clears throat> So kind of coming back to this epic view here, if you do have waterfall projects going, um, you know, some of these don't necessarily have to be agile. They could be connected up to your waterfall tool of choice, like say Project Desktop or Project Online. So I could have one place to go to see a list of all of my ongoing, you know, projects, if you want to call them that, um, the status of those. Uh, the resourcing of those, the financials of those, you know, many things are still the same. The big difference is how we go and execute on it in the process and the tools we use and so on and so forth, um, which we're then rolling back up into this bigger picture. Um, from there, as I mentioned, there's also a timesheet capability within here if your organization requires you to do so. If you have teams that are focused on one particular, say, epic at a time um, or feature or whatever it might be, um, then maybe it's not necessary because you already know, you know, this group of people is working on this, so we know it's, you know, 40 hours a week or whatever it might be. Maybe there's no need for that. Uh, but in many organizations, uh, accounting and finance still require timesheets to be filled out so that they can generate different costs and such, uh, as well as many times you're not able to just focus on one thing for multiple, you know, um, environmental external type reasons and such. So what you can see here is I've been working on this mobile feedback um, user story, and I could come in and track my time to that that I've been spending on that as I go, and then save and submit this and go through a standard approval process. This can then be rolled back up and turned into actual labor costs as well later on. Um, so as these epics and programs are you know, going on, we're going to want to report off of all this and get visibility into what's going on. Are we doing well? Are we on track? Are we off track? Um, and so there's multiple different ways to do that. Um, one, if I click on reports here, it's going to uh, take me into a particular report that has multiple different tabs within it where I can go and look at this you know, information in many different ways depending on what I'm interested in. So on the home page here, you see there's kind of an overview of things. Um, but if I'm more interested in, say, looking at those lean metrics that I briefly mentioned earlier, I can see my uh, different you know, activities going on and lean metrics around those types of things. If I'm more interested in seeing more of a roadmap or a timeline you know, type of view, I can come in and I can look at that and I can expand these and get more detail here down to whatever level I'm trying to look at to understand you know, when things are coming. This can be shared out to the larger organization, uh, to stakeholders, you know, whoever it might need to be. If I'm more interested in financial or budgeting types of information, I can go into the relevant tabs for that. And I won't go into all of them today, uh, but know that you can do that. Uh, within these same reports, I can grab more detailed information out of my Agile tool or tools of choice. In this case, I'm looking at Azure DevOps information here, uh, you know, all the way down to the bug and user story counts and those types of things levels uh, if I choose to do so. So I can kind of sit at a very high level or drill all the way down into the details if, if I need to, depending on my role. Um, other um, you know, managers may prefer just to simply come into Power BI because I might be looking at reports across many different systems um, for many different you know, types of information. And so from Power BI, I could come in and I could look at a dashboard like this if I was a manager and understand you know, how those programs are doing, how those epics are doing, depending on what level I'm looking at here. And if I want more information, I can simply click into any of these. For example, this one was uh, more details around the, the lean metrics that we may be tracking, which is what SAFE and many other methodologies recommend tracking. Um, for things like feature cycle time and net promoter scores and number of releases, release predictability, you know, so on and so forth. So I can drill in and get more detail there if I choose to do so as well. 
Um, lastly, I should point out, because this is all built in the Office 365 ecosystem, um, not only can we leverage things like Power BI for reporting, but we can also leverage things like Power Apps for mobile app um, you know, type capabilities on top of this. So what you're looking at here is essentially a mobile app, and you could picture this on a mobile phone or a tablet or whatever it might be. Um, and it's simple to, to put these together as well as we have some templates out of the box ones you can start from. Or I could come in, I can see basic information about my Epic. If I was to click on that, it'll drill me in, give me all the information. I could even pop this in an edit mode. So if I needed to make a quick update to something, I could do so. And there's multiple use cases. You could do mobile approvals. Um, you know, there's apps for that, you know, so on and so forth. Um, as well as this all really ties into Flow. If you're not familiar with Flow, Flow allows you to kind of automate um, certain uh, you know, daily type tasks, um, approvals, so on and so forth. Um, and this all ties into it as well. So if I was to come here, for example, um, I could utilize Flow. I can say create one on the fly, or we can have ones already predefined and do things like I need to get signatures with document DocuSign in order to get this passed. Or I just want someone to get a quick notification, whatever it might be. So there's a whole set of different Flow uh, templates that you can utilize to, to go add some, you know, an extra layer on top of this of, of value and such. So with that, you can see how, um, you know, can start at very high level strategic themes, break those down into programs, do high level budgeting, break those down into different epics. Eventually those will get down to the execution level into user stories, task bugs and all that. And then we roll that all back together. So we have one view of all of this, you know, one place to go for status and for reports and so on and so forth. So we can get visibility of what's going on, make sure we're working on the things that are important, that drive the most value, while not stressing out our resources and budgets and so on and so forth. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Jose for just another couple slides, and then we'll let you guys go for the day. So there you go, Jose. Matt, can you hear me? I can. OK, great. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so thank you, uh, Matthew, for that. That was a um, very helpful walkthrough of our one plan for total agile portfolio management. Um, I want to stress that uh, this is a partner solution provided by uh, Wikisoft. So one plan um, is a, you know an additional component that you would have um, um, in your Office 365 environment. Uh, with the different um, capabilities that Matthew uh, provided, and um, also our One Connect is being used to uh, integrate the different tools that you have. Um, so those are you know two different additional apps that um, are added to your environment. Uh, and as I'll show later, we have the capability to um, uh, to provide everything that comes with you know making this a reality within the, within your organization. So um, some summary recommendations. So we, you know, our the market trend shows that um, there are uh, multiple, could be multiple agile team approaches within uh, your organization. So, so you have to recognize them. So when one of the things that um, we were with a customer the other day, and they were, um, they weren't really sure how many different uh, approaches were. Their their goal was to do enterprise agile PPM, yet they did not know all the different styles and and uh, frameworks you know is it is it scrum agile um is it um just pure kanban uh so you know recognize all those um before uh, beginning your journey towards enterprise agile ppm uh, inventory the tools so just like you're gonna look at the the process look at the different tools because those are the ones that you're gonna have to integrate into um you know your enterprise agile ppm methodology so um bring that into uh um, uh, into consideration. Uh, what's going to have to happen, probably the hardest step, which is um, it, at, a, at an enterprise level, you're going to have to come up with a standard. Again, if you're using SAFE, then follow SAFE and try to uh, integrate the different approaches into SAFE. Uh, there's a way to do that. Um, if you're going to be using Nexus, same thing. Um, you know, we have to figure out how to roll up all of those different teams using those different methodologies into one perspective. and um, um, you know, like we showed in uh, in one plan, and then finally take that standard and the tools and integrate them into an, an agile PPM solution, and that's what we're trying to show um, uh, with uh, the one plan uh, solution and and demonstration. It gives you the ability to reach that goal 
of having that um, enterprise agile PPM perspective. So um, with that, uh, one more slide on our, you know, how do, how do we actually get there? So uh, Microsoft has all the capabilities um, to help you through this journey and everything begins with uh, an assessment where we do a business strategy workshop or workshops depending on, um, you know, what we're conquering, um, the scope. Uh, in this particular case, we talked about the one plan uh, for uh, total agile portfolio management. So, you know, that's a solution that we'd be looking at. Uh, but there's probably changes that you're going to have to make uh, into your agile PMO in addition to uh, supporting you through training, staffing, and um, integration of DevOps if that's also on your, on your horizon. So, um, you know, count on. Uh, these capabilities that we can bring to the table to uh, deliver your enterprise agile PPM um, capability. With that, um, I will close uh, today's webinar. Thank you everyone for uh, joining us and um, Barton, the, the problems initially with the sound, hopefully it'll come out in the recording uh, so everyone can hear afterwards. Uh, well, we have a few minutes for questions, and um, Matthew, you still on? Yeah, making up with that. Um, uh, one question that came in was around uh, earned value. Can we track earned value? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, generally speaking, when we do so, um, you know, we would leverage either Microsoft Project Desktop and or Project Online, which can integrate with the solution I showed today, and I briefly mentioned that. Um, and so then when you do that, it passes in all the relevant information so that, you know, the views and reports and such we're looking at can include those types of metrics as needed as well. Um, but happy to talk about that more if anyone has any specific needs there. Um, I also got questions just about waterfall projects in general and how can we accommodate them very similarly. Um, so um, there is a connector there for Project Desktop as well as Project Online. If you were using either of those to build out your waterfall schedules, there's also a light scheduling option built into one plan that can allow you to build out some kind of high level like, light schedules. If you really have like trained PMPs that are trying to do more details um, and really use all the power that there is in Project Desktop and that they've been trained on, that's absolutely fine as well. That can integrate into the mix and flow up into those uh, portfolio program, et cetera, level views um, to see how things are going across all of your Agile and Waterfall projects together. Um, lastly, uh, one other question that we got um, that's probably beneficial to the wider audience. Um, what tools can we integrate with? I mentioned on the Waterfall side there. On the Agile side, um, we currently have integrations with JIRA and Azure DevOps. Um, I know actually we're working on a CA Agile formerly rally, rally integration um, as we speak actually as well. So that'll be something upcoming in the near future. But if you're using other Agile tools, I know there's a ton of them out there, the Trellos and those types of things, Hill Tracker, et cetera. Um, no reason we can't connect up to those. We would just have to um, discuss you know, what it would take to do that. Those were all the probably. We have, uh, we have one more question that came up. Sure, let me pull that up here. Um, uh, one, could you provide weekly and monthly highlights? Uh, I assume that has to do with kind of status reporting and those types of things. Um, and so, yes, absolutely. When I was in there, um, I showed you can kind of do different levels of time. So you could have things at the yearly, at the quarterly, at the monthly. Uh, you can't even go down to the weekly and even daily in certain areas of it if needed, depending on, you know, what you're looking at. Usually that gets more into the execution side of things. Um, and we had a, a question around archiving, it looks like, as well. Um, generally speaking, if things don't get archived, per se, they get closed, and that filters them out of the different views. And then you could always go back and review those later, as well as report on historical data. Uh, we generally recommend, you know, after so many years of using a tool, you might want to take some of the really old information and archive that out. Um, you, you may still want it to be reportable, uh, but there's multiple ways you can do that. One easy one is just exporting that stuff out into Excel spreadsheets and then you know, tapping that in for reports. Cool. I think that'll do it for today as far as questions, is it? All right. 
Thank you, Matthew. Thank you for uh, answering the questions and thanks everyone for attending. Again, if uh, we did not get to anything, uh, let us know offline, uh, you know, through our contact information. And uh, with that, we will close today's webinar and uh, look forward to seeing you in our coming webinars. Have a, a great rest of the day. Bye, everybody.